everyone. Welcome to the Haunted Book Club podcast. We'll start off like we always do with Bean's joke of the day. Why did the ghost keep haunting the custom house? Because it had some unfinished business with the tax code. Hamilton's custom house has had many tenants through its 164 years that it's been around. As the name suggests, it started as a customs house beginning in 1860. Then, it was the home of the Naples Macaroni Company, and then in the 1980s, it became a martial arts college. And through all the years, the rumors of the spirit haunting its halls go back to 1873, and to a man named Alexander Wingfield, who wrote a poem about the spirit called The Woman in Black. And it goes like this. The ghosts long ago used to dress in pure white. Now they're on a different track. For the Hamilton ghost, he seems to take delight to stroll around the city in black. Pat Duffy, who saw her in Corktown last night, has been here today telling a friend that she stood seven feet nine inches in height and wore a large Greckian bend. A peeler who met her turned blue with a fright, and in terror he clung to a post. His hair, once a carroty red, had turned white since the moment he looked at the ghost. Her appearance was frightful to gaze on, he said. It filled him with horror complete. She looked unlike anything living or dead that he'd ever seen on his beat. Her breath seemed hot as a furnace, besides. It smelled strongly of sulfur and gin. Two horns, a yard long, stuck straight out of her head, and her hooves made a great clatter and din. Her air was majestic and terribly grand, as she passed muffled up in her veil, a bottle of ruin she held in each hand, and she uttered a low palliative wail. There is rest for the weary, but none for me. I cannot find rest if I try. Three months and three days I've been on a spree. Mr. Mueller, how's that for high? I have mixed in the world both with spirits and men. Once more with the spirits I'll go. She stopped, took a sniff of the ruin, and then she popped into the cellar below. He could hear her again crying out from her den. Tonight you will see me no more, but I'll meet you Saturday evening at ten by the fountain that stands in the gore. Some people have passed there this morning at two, found the peeler glued to his post. He told them his yarn that I've been telling you, and that's the last news from the ghost. And in the early 2000s, they started having ghost tours in the custom house. Many have said, that they've seen her in the attic, including on a tour it was reported in the Hamilton Spectator on October 13th, 2005. Someone said, I can feel the energy pulling me into the room. It's like a magnet pull. Then another woman was like, oh my god. And the man behind her blacked out, falling to his knees, then slowly backwards. I've seen many titles for the, the ghost. The Grey Lady, The Dark Widow, The Dark Lady or the one in black. Surprise me. I couldn't find out who she was. I'd like to mention another spirit, where the woman in black has the hold of the attic. It's said that there's a little boy that sits on a step watching everyone in the basement. And apparently, you can tell which step he sits on because it's more worn away than the others. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Haunted Book Club podcast. If you listen closely, you can already hear the echoes of the next story, Sweet Dreams.